You know, even if 2023 ended tomorrow, it would have been a great year for foldables. Techno launched the cheapest book type folder ever. Huawei raised the bar for industrial design yet again. And Oppo and Vivo refreshed the flip phone space with their own takes on the clamshell phone, all while the leaks suggest that the best in that category is yet to come. But none of those are as crucial to the future of foldables as the phone I just spent two hours with at Google's New York City offices. I'm Michael Fisher, and this is a first look at the first foldable built by the people who make Android, the Google Pixel Fold. The first thing to understand about the Pixel Fold is that for those of us in the US, it's the only flexible screen alternative to Samsung's Galaxy Fold. And thankfully, Google didn't just ape Samsung's design. When it's closed, the Pixel Fold is squat, shutting completely flat and splitting the difference between book type and flip foldables in a way that till now only Oppo had done with its Find N family of phones. And when it's open, its 7.6 inch display deploys into an aspect ratio that's wide instead of tall or square. But while the Pixel Fold looks like that Find N2 on screen, in the hand, it's something else entirely. Its aluminum chassis measures only 12 millimeters thick when closed, less than a millimeter more than Xiaomi's super slim Mixfold 2. Then there's the hinge. At the ends of the stainless steel vanity cover, we've got these pronounced cams that impart enough friction to pose the phone in pretty much any posture, and a mechanism that closes it with a very familiar clop. Now note the aspect ratio that suggests a moleskin notebook and Five minutes into my hands-on, it hit me. This isn't a Find N2. This is a Surface Duo with a flexible screen. Even the mass is the same. 283 grams sounds like a lot on paper, but if this makes sense, it only feels heavy when you remember that it's supposed to feel heavy. The thinness, the balance, they do a lot to camouflage that weight. And the engineering only becomes more impressive when you realize that this thing comes with 120 hertz displays inside and out, IPX8 water resistance, and Qi wireless charging. Now, as with any first generation product, there is room for improvement. For example, I was told that wired charging tops out at 21 watts, which in my view is too slow given this battery size. Then there's the crease on the ultra thin glass main display. I mean, it's not the gutter-like trench of a Samsung foldable, but compared to the much subtler creases of Oppo and Vivo, it is more apparent than I expected. And while I find the debate about this phone's bezels wildly overblown, I have to admit that these could look a bit better. I've gotten used to the narrow, fully symmetrical bezels of the Oppo Find N2 and Galaxy Fold 4, so it is a little jarring that the Pixel Fold went fatter on dorsal and ventral than port and starboard. Now that said, that design decision did allow Google to hide the inner selfie shooter inside the bezel instead of doing a hole punch or an under-display camera. And honestly, there are so many more important things to talk about. Things like software. This is the aspect I was most eager to test during my hands-on because I've seen what happens when Android is made to run on a widescreen and it's not always pretty. As friend of the channel, Michelle Rahman explains, most apps are built to run on the most popular devices. So, you know, the traditional slab candy bar phones. Adapting them to foldable or tablet shapes and sizes is possible, of course, but it demands more time and work, so many developers will just force the apps to run in portrait. And that leads to the forced rotation that so vexed me on the Oppo Find N2. Michal explains this way better. I will leave a link in the description to his in-depth coverage of this issue. So one of the first things I did on the Pixel Fold was to install some of those same exact apps that I was trying on the Oppo, and I was happy to see that the Pixel did not take me for a spin. Now granted, this doesn't look very pretty right now, but I was told that this implementation is not final, so I speculate that either the app will be centered with a blurred background, or Google will find a more constructive use of the rest of the screen. 
I also checked some Google-made apps that currently don't work well on the Find N2, like Calendar and Meet. And I'm very happy to say that both are laid out much better on Pixel Fold. And peppered in between all this were little peeks at other optimizations. A multitasking screen that makes more efficient use of the canvas, and that new transient taskbar that Michelle tells me should come to all large screen Android 14 devices. Now, I don't want to stay in the weeds here, so let's zoom back out and realize that all these things together are what make the Pixel Fold so important. By building its own foldable, Google is implicitly declaring that foldables will play a big part in the future of smartphones. And by staking that claim, it also takes on the responsibility of shaping how Android behaves on flexible screen devices. And that means it'll no longer be, for example, Samsung's responsibility to add missing features that will then remain exclusive to Samsung phones. Eventually, all foldables will automatically start from a better position. Finally, on top of all this, remember that this Fold is also a Pixel. That means it brings features no other phone gets. Now playing, call screening, that voice recorder with the insanely good transcription. And I probably don't need to remind you of the Pixel's camera bona fides. The combination of Google's photo processing and a 5X periscope zoom camera has a really solid chance of making this the best camera system on a foldable. And all this stuff together, the, the camera, the special features, it's all stuff I miss when I put my Pixel back on the shelf after a review, and it's great to see it finally offered on a folding phone. All right, now let's come back down to earth for the conclusion, because folks, the Pixel Fold is more than a test bed. It's a real product that'll cost a buck shy of $1,800 when it goes on sale June 27th. At the same full retail price, Samsung.com is still quoting for the Galaxy Fold 4 at upload time. And for that price, there are real questions that need answering. What kind of service and repair options will Google offer to owners? And how well will it execute on those offers? How will the Tensor G2 processor hold up in network performance and thermal efficiency? How will the Pixel Fold measure up to the forthcoming Galaxy Fold 5 due later in the summer? And will the existence of the Pixel Fold really have the network effect across the foldable ecosystem that I hope it will? Those are questions I can only answer in a full-length review, which is coming soon. And because the cover glass on the front and back of this phone is Gorilla Glass Victus, well, don't be surprised if the next time you see this phone on this channel, it's decked out with dbrand. Wait, don't skip ahead, there's something new here. My longtime sponsor knows that I just prefer the texture of a vinyl or leather skin to naked glass, frosted or no. And this year, dbrand is going the extra mile with a grip case that brings a feature Google didn't, an integrated kickstand. Check them out at the link in the description, and thanks to dbrand for sponsoring this video. Once again, folks, I am right now at Google I.O. in Mountain View, trying to learn as much as I possibly can about the Pixel Fold and the future of Android foldables. So please drop your questions below in the comments, follow my Instagram story at the Mr. Mobile, or hit me on Twitter at Captain Two Phones. Speaking of I.O., disclosure. Google provided travel and lodging for me to attend its annual developer conference this year, as well as time with a pre-production Pixel Fold review sample. But as always, I gave the company no editorial input, it had no copy approval rights, and in fact did not see this video prior to publication. They're not a sponsor, they're a subject. Please subscribe to The Mr. Mobile on YouTube if you want to see more videos like this. Until next time, from Michael Fisher, thanks for watching. And stay mobile, my friends.